Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really powerful mini gaming PC that I recently put together. In fact, this is using the fastest low profile dual slot GPU that you can get right now. And it really puts out some amazing performance given the form factor of this unit. As you can see, the small form factor PC is a very slender frame, and it's actually meant to go either horizontally on the table, all of the air is going to be drawn in from the bottom of the unit, or you could set it up vertically, and personally, I like having this set up vertically, that way we don't have to worry about any kind of airflow. And if you take a look at the back of the PC, we've got vents for the GPU and the CPU cooler in here. And this is actually a chassis from an older AliExpress mini PC that I picked up a while ago, I think a couple years ago. But with this one, we've upgraded the CPU and GPU, so now it's putting out way better performance. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the unit. I would definitely still consider this a mini PC and it's definitely a gaming PC with the components we have in here. Overall, I've always been a big fan of this kind of plain Jane design here. I did put a uh, carbon fiber vinyl over the top of it. It's usually just all aluminum. I think you can pick these up in black or white also. But at the time of purchasing this, they only had the silver available. So to get in here, we're actually going to remove the bottom. There's just four screws. This will come right off. It's also got some rubber feet there to kind of keep it up off the table. And as you can see, I mean, we've got a full-fledged PC in here. Our CPU, RAM, and our GPU. This originally came with a GTX 1650. And, you know, for the time, and even right now, it's not a bad performer. If you want to build a small form factor PC and you can pick one of these up for cheap, I would definitely recommend it. But I wanted more GPU power, so I actually went with the RTX A2000. This is on par with the RTX 3050, but when overclocked, this can outperform the 3050. This is the most powerful low profile dual slot card right now as making this video. And if you pick the A2000 up used on Amazon, it's the same price as a new GTX 1650. And if I had to choose between the two, I would always go with the A2000. So obviously the layout on this PC is very odd. The motherboard itself does have that PCIe slot coming off the side of the board and it only supports a 9th gen Intel CPU. And originally, you could pick these up with an i3 or an i5. I've upgraded the CPU to a 9600K, so we've got six cores there, no extra threads, but we do have a clock up to 4.6 gigahertz. I believe they only offered the 9600 or the 9400F in this when you bought it from AliExpress. The case itself comes apart quite nicely, and the rear panel actually had to be cut in order to fit the A2000, but luckily it's soft aluminum, so it went through really easily. And uh, as you can see, once it's all taken apart, we've got a PC platter here. GPU, motherboard, RAM, SSD, CPU, and cooler are all just mounted right here. And by the way, I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM installed and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Another thing some people may have noticed is we don't have a power supply inside of the case, and that's because it's an external four pin power supply. I've got a 280 watt PSU here, and that's gonna supply plenty of power for the A2000 and the 9600K. The A2000 only draws power from the PCIe slot and it'll pull up to around 71 to 72 watts and that's totally maxed out. And when it comes to the 9600K, right now I've actually got the TDP set only to go up to 90 watts, but we can go a bit higher with boosting. But I'd say with the cooler, form factor, and power supply, that's exactly where I want to be here. Now I do wish that we actually had a 10th gen motherboard or even a Ryzen motherboard here because with this 9600K, we've only got six cores, six threads. 
I could have purchased the 9th Gen i7, but I already had this 9600K that wasn't being used, so I figured I'd just throw it in here. It just would have been nice to have a couple extra threads. But overall, this thing's performing really well as an everyday PC. I mean, if you wanted to do some web browsing, email checking, video editing, photo editing, we've got more than enough power from the CPU and GPU here to basically do anything you want to do on a PC like this. But this is really meant to be a tiny gaming machine. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one, and we're going to go with Spider-Man Miles Morales. The RTX A2000 has 6GB of GDDR6 VRAM, and uh, it's got a clock that's kind of all over the place. I've actually seen it boost up to 2000MHz in some cases. Now it's rated at around 1500, but as you can see, it's running up to 1800 with Miles Morales. And by the end of this run, I had an average of 81FPS, and this is at 1080p high with no DLSS or FSR, so we have no scaling going on whatsoever here. And if you take a look at Afterburner with that i5-9600K, you'll see we're right there on the edge of this thing running at a continuous 65 watts. Now I've got it set to boost only up to 90, but right now we're at 4 gigahertz and it's performing really well. But it would be nice to have a more powerful CPU in this unit because uh, when we move over to Geekbench 5, single core, 1514, not too bad given that we have a 9th gen CPU, but uh, taking a look at multi-core here, 4876, and this has fallen way behind even newer mobile chips running at a lower TDP, and that's because we don't have any extra threads. We've just got those six cores here. Next up for the synthetics, we've got 3D Mark Firestrike coming in with a 14,659. And finally, Time Spy with a 6,330. And really, what's driving these scores up here is that GPU. <coughs> Moving over to some more game testing, here we have Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p high. Most of the time, we're in the mid to high 70s, low 80s, but every once in a while, I do see it dip down to the mid 60s, and I really do think it has to do with CPU performance and not so much the GPU here, because pairing this up with a more powerful CPU really does unlock the potential of the RTX A2000. I figured we'd throw an older one at it, GTA 5, 1080p, very high, so we're basically maxed out here, and we can get an average of around 110 FPS out of this game. I wouldn't mind playing it like this, we could even go up to 1440, very high, and get an average of around 80 with the A2000. Next on the list, we've got Sonic Frontiers. I've had a few people ask about testing this game out. I usually test it in Linux, but since we're here with Windows, I figured I'd throw it in. And we're at very high settings, 1080p, running at a constant 60. And I had a feeling we'd be able to run this game really well in a rig like this. I always have to throw at least one fighting game in, so here we have Injustice 2, 1080p, very high. So we're maxed out with this game at 1080, and even at high settings, 1440, the A2000 can handle this game just fine. So when it comes to fighting games like Street Fighter V and even Mortal Kombat 11, you're not going to have any problems on this machine. Here's Elden Ring, and this is really the only game that gave me issues at 1080p. And it's not due to the GPU, it's actually due to the CPU here. Unfortunately, it's just not pushing enough to get this game up to 60, because even when I drop this down to medium, we're right there on the edge, 56 to 58 FPS. Next on the list, we've got Doom Eternal, very well optimized game, 1080p, ultra, no problem. We're up there in the hundreds. We actually got an average of 117 FPS out of this game. And this is another one that the A2000 can handle at 1440p high settings over 60 FPS. And the final game I wanted to test was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And I'm using the recommended settings, but I did disable DLSS. So we're at a true 1080p. And by the end of this, we had an average of 84 FPS, but a low of 54, so we did dip under 60. Some of these settings can be adjusted, and I'm sure we could run this at a constant 60 with the right mix. Or you could always enable DLSS, just set it to quality, and you can get an average of around 110 FPS out of this. 
So far, I've been getting some really good performance out of this PC. I think what's kind of holding this back is the CPU. And I know the 9600K isn't, you know, super old or anything like that, but it does show its age when it comes to newer AAA games. So it would be nice to find a similar motherboard that would support 10th gen or even 12th gen Intel, or heck, even a Ryzen 3000. I wouldn't mind putting something in here with, uh, you know, 8 cores, 16 threads, and still using that A2000 because it really is a great GPU, and, you know, given that it's a low-profile, dual-slot card, it can hang with the big dogs, given its form factor. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave some links in the description. Now, picking up this case here might be a little out of the question, but you can still go very small form factor with that A2000, and if you've already got a rig that's using something like a GTX 1050 low-profile, this is an amazing upgrade. If you've got any questions, or if you want to see anything else running on this PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.